I thought about how I'd been traveling up and down the dangerous highways, singing and telling men and women that God is able. And here I'm lying in the hospital, afraid to go into that operating room. After I had a talk with myself, then I had a talk with Dr. Jesus. I told him I would go in there if he would go with me. Speak to the doctors and tell the doctors what to do. The 29th day of March, I went into that operating room, no fear. I had to learn to walk again. I had to learn to use my hands again. But tonight I can say thank God. I can go anywhere. I can sit down to the piano and sing and play again. But so many nights while lying there in that hospital, my body was racked with pain. I was so sick I couldn't pray. The only thing I could do was just look up toward heaven and utter these words. that 
that's alright. Right. Cause I know Jesus. Good afternoon, this is Minister Shirley Knight Harris coming to you with A Mother's Try about people that lose their children to drugs, incarcerated, being murdered, belongs to gangs, and even suicide. We're just standing in the gap to let our mothers and father know that God is with you and that you're never alone. He's promised he's never leave you nor forsake you. This ministry is a fasting and praying ministry where God said in Jeremiah, he's calling for the cunning women, quelling women that come before him and moan and cry because Satan is coming through the window to get our male child in the street. And for that, we gotta stop for a few minutes and have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, and we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the day that you've given to us. We shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Anything in our heart that should not be there, remove it and fill each of us with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. We just thank you for the Holy Spirit being among the midst of us to teach, lead, and guide us unto all truth, that we'll be able to separate the truth from the knowing to truth. We exalt you, we magnify you, and we honor you today. For holy, holy is the Lord their God. Lord, we pray that as we go into a lesson today that you would give us the wisdom, knowledge, and divine revelation to the depths and to the height of your word and help us not only be a hear of the word, but a do of the word. Lord, let there something be said to that would encourage your people today. And these blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today, as we move into the Christmas, into the season of Christmas, of giving and so forth, the first thing that I think about is... Uh, women, how important women are. I'm going to talk about two women that are very important in the Bible, and that's Elizabeth and Mary. With God, there's nothing that is impossible, and Mary husband, I mean, Elizabeth husband, Zachary, was one of the priests, and he was in the temple, and he was he was going about his work in the temple, his division as a duty that week. And honor fell upon him as he entered the, the sanctuary and burned incense before the Lord. While he was in the temple, there's an angel that appeared before him. We know that the angels are God messenger that appeared before Zachary, standing at the right of the altar of the incense. He was startled and he was terrified. But the angel said he's letting Zachary know that he's not to be afraid, for he come to tell him that God has heard your prayer. For his wife was barren and both was old and they did not have any children. And letting them know that his wife was going, Elizabeth was going to bear a son. His name was going to be John. Now that is not a Jewish name, so that was, that was unusual for them to even think that that would be the name of the baby. You both have great joy and gladness at his birth, and many will rejoice with you, for he will be one of the Lord's great men. He goes on to let him know that he must never touch wine or hard liquor, and he will, fill, he will be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb before his birth. He's going to persuade many Jews and persuade them to the Lord 
his God, and he will be a man of rugged spirit, power like Elijah, the prophet of old, and he will precede the coming of the Messiah, preparing the people for his arrival. He's not going to be Jesus. He's going to be the forerunner before Jesus. Just think about that. You know, somehow God always sends someone along, and here, he, here he's, sending, he's sending John just before Christ. And he's going to be the forerunner to prepare, prepare the way. He said he will soften adults' heart to become like little children and will change disobedient mind to the wisdom of faith. And the first thing, of course, that Zachary said, oh, that's impossible. He said, he said that's impossible for, for I'm old now and my wife is also well among the years. But we know that there is nothing that is impossible for God. When the angel said, I'm Gable, I came to stand with the very presence of God. It was him who sent me to you with the good news. And now because you haven't believed me, you're to be stricken silent, unable to speak until the child is born. For my word will certainly come true at the proper time. So in other words, Zachary didn't believe God. And sometimes that's how it is with us. When God give us a message or something, we don't believe it, you know. Because sometimes we expect it to come one way and it comes another. Remember, Zachary was in the, in the temple of the Lord. He was going about his business. He was doing what uh, his duty that he had to do for that work, week. And the angel appeared before him. And he said, we're old. And the angel is letting him know who he is. He said, I'm Gable. He was saying, nothing is impossible for God. And he also let him know that he was not going to be able to speak until after the baby was born. And then, of course, then the angel traveled on to, to his wife as he stayed at the temple for the remaining of the day of the duties and then returned home. Soon after, Elizabeth, his wife, became pregnant and went into seclusion for five months. How kind is the Lord, she explained, to take away my disgrace by having no children. Because with the Jewish, and in those days, it was a disgrace not to have any children. Every mother wanted to have children, and there are many that didn't have any. We know that Elizabeth had gotten old, and she didn't have any children. So she's saying how kind the Lord is to allow her to have a child. And then the following month, the angel Gable now goes. Uh, the angel Gable now goes to Nazareth to a village of Galilee to a virgin by the name of Mary. Remember, I'm talking about two women in the Bible. One is Elizabeth, and the other one is Mary. As he appeared to her, and he congratulated her and let her know that she was a favored lady. She was favored by the Lord. The Lord is with you. And Mary, of course, was confused, and she, was, she, didn't, she didn't know what it was talking about, and she was thinking, what did the angel could mean? And he lets her know that she's not to be afraid. The angel told her, for God has decided to want, wonderfully bless you. Very soon you become a pregnant and have a baby boy, and you are to name him Jesus. He shall be the very great and shall be called the Son of God. And the Lord shall give him the throne of his ancestors, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom shall never end. Can you imagine that? And you're wondering, how is this going to be? I remember there was one time... It was so hard for me to understand how in the world could a virgin, virgin have a child without being involved or being intimate with a man. But, you know, everything that God does, Satan has, has a way of imitating it. Do you know, uh, <clears throat> even today, how women can have a baby without having been intimate with a man at all? So if that's possible, you know, well, all things is possible with God. We never thought that there would become a day where a woman could have a child and she does not have to have sex with a man, you know? But of course, that's just the way the world is. But with God, so we can see now as I look back when I was a child and I was saying, how is that going to happen? And this is what he's letting her know. Don't worry about it. Congratulations. He said, don't be afraid, the angel told her, for God has decided to wonderfully bless you. And remember, Mary was, <clears throat> Mary knew about Jesus, uh, about the prophecy that had gone forth. Mary asked the angel, how can I have a baby for I am a virgin? The angel replied, 
the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of God shall overshadow you, so the baby born to you will be utterly holy, the Son of God. And when you think about that, and that's what it's all about today, when we talk about Jesus, talk about the birth of Jesus, when we talk about the Savior of the world, we're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the baby that was born through Mary by, by the Holy Spirit, overcoming Mary, and she became pregnant, and she brought forth the child of God. She was overshadowed. It said, overshadowed you. He overshadowed her. So the baby was born to you will utterly be holy. He will be the son of God. So she conceived. And six months later, a son in her old age. And six months later, it says here, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and the power of God shall overshadow you. So the baby born unto you will utterly holy, the son of God. Furthermore, six months later, Hmm, where am I? Uh, your Aunt Elizabeth, you know, also is barren, and he's letting her know that six months later that she shall have, that she's pregnant. She became pregnant in her old age, for every promise from God shall surely come to pass. Mary said that I'm the Lord's servant. You know, when you think about that, I, you know, you wonder, oh, God, could I do something like that? But, you know, God is not calling us to bring forth the Savior of the world today, but he's calling us to do other things for him. He's given us ministry to go forth. He's given us to go forth into the world and compel, men, compel men, women, men, and children to come unto him. He's commanded us to go forth, go forth into the world. So we don't, and Mary has already, I know many people uh, worship Mary, but Mary is the one, not the one that we worship. Mary was the one that brought forth the Savior of the world. And he letting her know, Behold, the handman of the Lord be unto you according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And then Mary arose the next few days and went unto the hill. And she went to Ju Judea and entered into the house of Zachary, where her aunt was pregnant. You know, Mary, uh, a few days later, she hurried, and she hurried, and when she got to where, where her aunt was, and the sound of Mary greeting Elizabeth child leaped within her, and she was filled with the Holy Ghost. She gave a glad try and explained, Mary, you are favored by God above all other women. You know, it's amazing how God doesn't leave us just there by ourselves. He always send someone there to encourage her. Now here it is, Mary is pregnant, and also her aunt is pregnant. They're both are old. Uh, I mean, I mean not they're both are old. Elizabeth is old, Mary is not old. But let her know that there is nothing that is impossible for God. And, and Elizabeth is letting her know that she's favored by God. And then Mary goes on and she began to sing a song. Mary responded, Oh, how I praise the Lord. How I rejoice in my God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And amazing, God could have used anyone. He could have used anyone, rich, poor, this. But he chose Mary to bring forth the Savior of the world. And so now she's making a song to the Lord. For he's the mighty God, the Holy One, has done great things to me. His mercy goes on from generation to generation to all who reference him. How powerful is his mighty arm, how he scattered the proud and hardy one, and he has torn prince from their throne and exalted the lowly. So she just praising the Lord, and this is how we should be when God does something for us. We should recognize that it's God that has done it for us, and we should praise the Lord. And she is just so happy as she goes back, and he has satisfied the hunger heart, and he has helped his servant Israel. He's not forgotten his promise to be merciful, for he promised our father Abraham and his children to be merciful to them forever. And God always keeps his promise. Whenever God makes a promise, God always keeps them. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then went back to her own house. And of course, as Elizabeth is waiting for the time had come for the baby to be born and it was a boy. And the word spread it all out because they've already, uh, 
And when she told they had already decided what the baby was going to be named, but the word spread it quickly to her neighbors and relatives of how kind the Lord had been to her. Remember, Elizabeth is old now, and everyone rejoiced. When the baby was eight days old, then the relatives and friends came for the circumcised ceremony because when the baby is eight months, eight days old, remember, this is when they circumcised the male child. They assumed that the baby name would be Zachary. Remember, the angel had already said that the baby was going to be named John. But Elizabeth said, oh, no, his name is John. There is no one in your family by that name. So they asked the baby's father, talking to him, Remember, he could not speak. God told him that he would not be able to speak until after the baby is born. And when he did, when they motioned to him, he gave the name John. Insulin Zachary could speak again, and he began praising God. And, you know, sometimes this is why it's so important when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us that we listen to the Holy Spirit, remember, and we sometimes can be just like Zachary, don't believe. And because Zachary did not believe, he was not able to speak until the child, until the child was born. And then his father was filled with the Holy Ghost and gave this prophecy, praise the Lord, the God of Israel, for he's come to visit his people and has redeemed them. He's sending us a mighty Savior from the royal line of his servant David, just as he's promised through his holy prophet long ago. And this is the way we must be. God has promised us a Savior, and his name is Jesus. And then when you go back, I was coming out of Luke, but if we was to go back over to Matthews, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. And now we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus. me 
Mr. Sherilyn Knight Harris coming to you with Mother's Try, giving encouragement to our mothers today to know that you are very, very important in God's sight and God loves you. You may have lost a child or you may have a child that's on drugs or in prison or, or you may have a child that committed suicide. Just know it belongs to games. Just know that God loves you and he promised to never leave you and never forsake you. And knowing that God can bring you joy, he can bring you peace, and in, in the midst of confusion, he said, "He'll keep whoever keep his mind stayed on him. He will give us a peace that passes all understanding." And today, you can imagine how Elizabeth had felt that she had lived all of her life and she had not had not bared a child or anything in her old age. And God blessed her with a child. And not only did He bless her with the child, but He was going to be the forerunner for Jesus. And of course, then there was Mary that came to visit her after she visited her aunt while she was pregnant. And imagine what encouragement that was to Mary. And now as we go back to Mary, we're going to go over in Matthews when Mary was engaged to be married. And I understand that there was three steps of marriage before you got married. But before we go there, we're going to trace the, uh, the exile of God people back in uh, 586 B.C. when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, he conquered Judah, and the people was put into captivity. It took thousands of captivity of the people to Babylon. But Mary was a virgin, and she became pregnant. And it said that Matthew lists Joseph only as the husband of Mary, not the father of Jesus. Matthew's generation legal lingers through Joseph. Mary ancestral line is record in Luke. Both Mary and Joseph was direct descendants of David. Okay, so now when Mary was pregnant, and now can you imagine, can you imagine what a young man would think in, they, in those days when it said that there are three steps in a Jewish marriage. First, the two families agreed to the union. Second, a public announcement was made. At this point, the couple was engaged. This was similar to engagements today, except that their relationship could only be broken. Can you imagine that? You, they can only break this if they're engaged in death. Death is the only thing, death or divorce. Let me see. This similar to engagement today, except that their relationship could be broken only through death or divorce, even though sexual relationship was not yet permitted. Third, the couple was to marry and begin living together. Mary and Joseph was engaged. Mary appeared to be unfaithful to Joseph. Can you, how many men you think that's going to marry a woman that is already pregnant and he knows that he's not the father? Just think about that, you know? The virgin birth is important to the Jewish faith, to the Christian faith. Jesus Christ, God's son, had to be free from the sinful nature. Pass on to all other humans by Adams because Jesus was born of a woman, he was a human being. But as the Son of God, Jesus was born without any trace of human sin. Jesus is born fully human and fully divine, he lived as a man. We know that he's fully understand our experience and struggle. He knows everything that we are going through because he's God. He supplies the power and the authority to deliver us from sin. You can tell Jesus your thoughts, your feelings, your needs. He'll be there for you. And he has the ability to help you. And can you imagine Joseph now, he's got to be obedient to God. He doesn't have to be obedient to God, but he is obedient to God. He said, now is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother was engaged to be married to Joseph. But while she was a virgin, she became pregnant. Just think about that by the Holy Spirit. 
he's considered her fiance because once you are Joseph is considered her fiance because once you become engaged, then that is your fiance. And as he considered this, he fell asleep. Can you imagine what his friends are probably telling him? Man, you're going to marry her and she's pregnant? You know that's not your baby? But then while Joseph was asleep, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and let him know, son of David. The angel said, do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child within her is born, conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she'll have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. You know, when I think of it today and think of us as children of God, that the things that God tells us to do, and sometimes you can be placed in difficult situation, and what are you going to do about it? Are you going to obey God, or are you going to obey what your friend and what the world is saying? We can see here that Joseph chose to obey the Lord. And he lets her know, let him know that, look, the virgin will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Now remember, this came to Joseph in a dream or a vision, in a dream. When Joseph woke up, he did, not, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. He brought Mary home to be his wife. But she remained a virgin till her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. I just want to stop there for a minute. And say again, and sometimes we can have different, difficult situation, and we don't know what to do, but we can see here that Joseph chose to obey God. And this is what God wants us to do. When the Holy Spirit speaks to us and tells us to do something, we have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Because God said obedient, obedient <clears throat> disobedience is worse than witchcraft. And we want to make sure that the things that we do are in line with God. It said he was faced with a difficult situation. Although he knew taking Mary as his wife could be humiliating, he chose to obey the angel, commanded to marry her. His action revealed four admirable quality. Many marry her. His action revealed the quality, righteousness, distression, sensitivity, responsive, self-discipline. Perhaps Joseph thought that he had only two options, divorce Mary quietly or have her stone. But God gave him a third option. You know, sometimes we do have options that we could do other things, but he chose to, to take God way. He chose to do what God wanted him to do. God often shows us that there are many options available than we think. Although Joseph seemed to be doing the right thing by breaking the engagement, only God could God guide and help him and make him make the best decision. And that's what I want to say to us today. To our young men and young women, you may be placed in situations where you can have a choice of making a decision, and you want to make the best decision. You always want to make the decision that's going to, where you're going to follow God. You're going to obey what the Word of God is saying. You're going to do what God tells you to do. Like I said, that Joseph could, of course, have been humiliated, and knowing that he had not been intimate with Mary and knowing that she was pregnant, but he chose to take the best choice, and that was to obey what God's word was telling, what God was telling him to do. The angel declared to Joseph that Mary's child was conceived by the Holy Spirit and would be a son. This reveal is an important truth about Jesus. He's born God human, unlimited God took all the limitation of humility, he could live and die for the Savior, for the salvation of all of us. And Jesus means the Lord saved. He came to the earth to save us. So I don't care what situation or what problem that you're in, he's the Savior of the world. There's nothing that you can do that is going to be too hard for God. Because he lived on the earth for 33 years. He know everything that you're going through. He said, I know your thoughts before you even think them. So in other words, that was the purpose that he came to die for our sin. 
And since he's died for our sin, every sin that you could ever commit, he already knows about it. Because God cannot stand to look at his son. He allowed darkness to come upon the face of the earth as sin began to hit his body. Lying, cheating, fornication, murder. As each sin hit his body. So he's already died for our sin. This is why we can stand righteous before God. This is why we are redeemed and we have already been set free. He said, I came that you would walk freely in the liberty that he has already given to us. We are free. You do not have to be bound by habits. You do not have to be bound by belonging to gain. You do not have to be bound by taking up a gun and taking someone's life. No, we are free. This is the purpose that Christ came. He came to set us free. He came to save us, the Savior of the world. And do you know him today? All you have to do is ask God to forgive you for your sin, ask Jesus to come into your heart and believe that he died, he rose, and he now sits on the right hand of the Father. Asking God to forgive you for your sins. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and ask him to be Lord over your life. He has already done it all. There's nothing that you have to do. You don't have to try to make yourself right because there is no righteousness in you. God said our best is as 50 rags in the eyesight of God. But Jesus has already paid the price for your sins. All you got to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior. I know that as we go into these holidays that many are going to be sad. There are some people going to even feel like they are all by themselves and that they have nobody in the world. But I stand to tell you that the God that's in you is stronger than he, the devil that's in the world. That if you must accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, he promised you that I'll, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He promised that I will go before you and I'll prepare a place for you that where I am that you may be there also. And he said, I will come back and receive you unto me. Don't let anyone bully you and tell you that you got to be in a game. No, you don't have to. All you have to do is accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, and he will give you the strength through Jesus Christ to rise up above all of the obstacles that could be in your life. I want to tell you that God loved you and Jesus died for you. Again, I want to say that you're listening to a mother's cry. Mother's cries about people losing their children to drugs, incarcerated, and being murdered. If you want to reach me on my website, it's eskhm.com, or you may reach me on my ESmail at eskhm at sbcglober.net. You may watch the shows or this show on on air, rmconair.com. Or you may call in. Uh, we would love for you to call in if you have questions. Or if you want to be a part of this show or you may want to give a donation. Or you may just want to voice your opinion on how you feel about our young men and our young women going to prison and so forth. You may call in at 323-965-1600. You may reach me on my cell phone at 310-748-0610. I want to talk about prison for a while here. I'm told that in prison that young men and young women are working for $35 a day. They're working for 35 cents or 19 cents. I want you to know that that is a form of slavery. I understand from the time a child is in the third grade, they have decided as to how well that child does in school, if that child fails and so forth, then they know how many more prison to build to house our children. But why stand to tell Satan that you cannot have any more of our children, that prison is a form of slavery and it's not for our children. God said, I came that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. But Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You don't need drugs because drugs will destroy you. As long as you're in your right mind, no one can outthink you. So you want to be in your right mind. You want to, the Lord said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. And how are you going to keep your mind stayed on God? By renewing the word of God. By getting into God's word. And as David said, I hit the word of God so deeply in my heart that I would not sin against God. Mother Stride, we're wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. If you do not have a church home, I encourage you to 
find you a church home. Pray to God because God said that we're he's to be first in our life. Now look at Mary. Mary was a virgin, but because she knew what the prophet said and she knew what God word it said, then she was willing to obey God and bring forth the Savior of the world. And this is why it's so important that we must get into a Bible study. We must get into a into a church and we must ask God or a temple and ask God to lead and guide us so that we can study to make ourselves worthy before God so we will not be ashamed, rightly diverted, dividing the word of truth. Again, this is Mother Stry, and we're wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. And we're going to take a short break.
Minister Shirley Knight Harris, a comment to you with a mother's cry. This program is dedicated to my son, Patrick Knight, that was killed in 1997. I often tell people I don't think I would have ever come forth with a mother's cry had I not lost my son to really let me know what it feels like to lose a child. I always felt that Satan had attacked me in every area except for with my children. But I thank God that I didn't sit down and just not you know, not stop with life. As many people are saying that when they lose a child or a loved one or something, they can't stop crying or they can't get up and move on. Just go before the Lord and find out what it is that God wants out of you. How can you make your son or your daughter's life more meaningful for the life that they live if they are not here anymore? So just know that God has a perfect plan for your life. And we can see how Mary, uh, Elizabeth, although Elizabeth had gotten old and she had never birthed a child in the world, and Zachary was very faithful to God, going about doing the work that God had wanted him to do, but yet God had a plan for their life. They not only allowed him to bring the forerunner into the world, which was John the Baptist, but he also, even the type of lifestyle that he lived and everything, you know, he didn't dress like others dress, and sometimes that may happen to you. So don't allow anyone to judge you about the things that you do or how you look and so forth. Just be committed to the Lord. And if you're committed to the Lord and what you're doing, then God will bring you through anything. He'll bring you through any and everything. And then we're going to go, as I get ready to close back to Mary, how Mary was a virgin. And God is using his people today. He said in the end day he's gonna pour out his gonna pour out his blessed spirit upon all flesh, you know. And so we know that God is gonna use and some of the young people are gonna have dreams and some are gonna have vision and so forth. So I say to you, be obedient to God that when God calls you that you are ready to move into whatever it is that God wants you to do. Because God has a great work here for us, for each and every one of us. And he will use us and we will allow God to use us. He will speak to us. And sometimes he will speak to us through a dream. And sometimes he speaks to us through vision. But he speaks today's day. This is in the olden days. But today's day, he speaks to us through his Holy Spirit. He said, I'll leave the Holy Spirit that will teach, lead, and guide you unto all truth. If the Holy Spirit is leading you to get out of that game, if the Holy Spirit is leading you, don't pick up that gun. Don't use those drugs because you don't need it. Obey the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is there to help you. It's not a it. The Holy Spirit is there to teach, lead, and guide you that you'll be able to separate the truth from the non-truth. And I'm saying today, God bless you. I'm a member of Greater Faith Missionary Baptist Church where my pastor is Lawrence W. Scott. We will be doing our pre-Christmas feeding on Saturday from 12 to 3. We invite you to come out to our short service that lasts from 12 to approximately 1230. And then we'll go into feeding and giving away the toys and so forth. And I just want you to know that if you will go on my website, it will give you the address and everything where the church is, which is 10441 South Vermont, Los Angeles 90044. And if you will go on my website, it will also will tell you about the shows that has been on and that you will be able to go back and look at. If you have a word of encouragement or if you have information that you want to share with the Mother's Try, 
I welcome you. I welcome you to come on to the show. I welcome you to talk about it. And if you have gotten been able to get counseling or whatever, I would like you to share that information so that we can pass it on to others that need the same counseling and so forth and maybe you know or someone know that has been fortunate enough to receive. Again, you may watch this show on REMC on air.com, REMC on gospel.com. Or you may email me at eskhm at sbcglober.net. And I pray that you have a, a prosper and a happy weekend. And we will see you back here. We will not see you next Thursday, but you will be able to tune in and you will be able to listen to a message. And just know that God loves you and Jesus died for you. And happy holidays.
don't have much to bring my heart's torn to pieces it's my own 